Good morning, boys and girls. How are we doing this morning? Fine, thank you. And how are you? Great. I am well. Thank you for asking. So today, I'm going to tell you a story. It's a remarkable time in our history as a country. Are you ready to hear? Yes, please. The excitement was boiling like a pot of red peas soup. Rosie, you see Pauline? Miss Jackie asked. No, Miss Jackie, I replied. Lord of mercy now. A home go find her in a crowd ya, said Miss Jackie frantically. Miss Jackie was Paul's grandmother. All right, listen to me now, Rosie. You and Paul stay right here, so. Because if you no last today, my head will go hot me, said Miss Jackie, as she disappeared in the crowd with her hands holding her head. Scores of school children lined the streets as Paul and I giggled and chatted about what we saw. The cool afternoon breeze and the bright evening sunshine melted the anticipation building in the streets. Me can't see the princess Rosie, she did too far, said Paul, as persons around us chatted about seeing Princess Margaret's car driving up on Tom Redcomb Road up to the National Stadium. Miss Jackie came back and grabbed Paul, and she was adamant that Miss Pauline was lost. Miss Pauline was our neighbor who lived right across the road from us in the Blue House. Children, it's time to get to the stadium because that is where the big celebration of a start, said Miss Jackie, as she wheeled us excitedly down the road. The sound boxes on the side of the roads belted out sweet reggae music. It was a grand celebration running right across the island from rural towns to right here in Kingston. I especially wanted to see the flag raise and hear the anthem for the first time. The sun settled orange in the sky over at the National Arena. There was an exciting energy sticking like magnets everywhere we turned. Miss Jackie helped Paul and I to get to a spot where we could watch the performance. My heart leaped inside as I imagined the joy of staying awake until midnight. Miss Jackie went to buy food from one of the vendors when Paul came up with this not-so-wise idea. Rosie, let's see if we can go right over there to get a better spot to see everything, he said as I smirked reluctantly. No, Paul, you alone go on. I told him, warning that he would later regret it. I could see Miss Jackie over by the green shop collecting goodies for us. When I looked back, Paul was gone. Where Paul there? shrieked Miss Jackie. One of the soup fell to the ground, almost burning her foot. Then one lady, with her big voice, tried to get everyone's attention. Yes, sir, a soup midnight now. Jamaica independence are coming, shouted the lady. There was no time to find Paul now. Down in the center of the arena, the flag was getting ready to be hoisted. The darkness stood still. It was the beginning of change. This was the moment I had been waiting for as light shone on the flagstaff. It was the gentle breeze that blew across my face as our flag hoisted in the crisp air. My eyes watered as I glimpsed the light on the green, gold, and black flag raised in glorious independence. Yes, it's official, August 6. 1962. What touched me? I screamed, grabbing the hand that was pulling me out of daze at what I just witnessed. The anthem ringing out with a melodious triumph of victory in every note. Paul, I startled. I had the best view, Rosie. I saw everything. I was near the front, grinned Paul from ear to ear. Oh, Paul, you better let Miss Jackie dance until she forgets how you ran away, I told him. We giggled as the celebrations continued. Miss Jackie had surely forgotten as she too was dancing the night away. 
Miss Pauline was there too, dancing and singing the joys of the freedom of a new nation. Miss Pauline later told us how she saw when the hot soup dropped from Miss Jackie, and that's how she found us. Although I wasn't there at Independence Day, I kind of felt it, you know, uh, when they said how um, she was dazing at the flag when it was hoisted. I think it was a very wonderful story and I uh, learned a lot about our independence and especially I've loved that part where it said the soup dropped and it almost hit her foot, it almost burnt her foot. And, uh, and when I heard that it was a lot of crowded from rural to Kingston, it sounded like it was a very big event. I wish I was there, but this story just makes me feel that I am there.